So Sheikh Ahmed, tell us about the next item you're going to take with you to the desert island. Next item is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Obviously, there's so many to choose from, but there's one that always resonates with me. And uh, I just think it's, it's, it's phenomenal hadith. And it's the hadith that says, Ajaban li amr al mu'min. The amazing or um, astonishing is the affair of the believer. Indeed, all of his affair is good. Inna amrahu kulla luhu khair. Everything, everything's always good. And it's for nobody except a believer. So something that's only Allah gives to a person who, who believes. And it says, if something good happens, either a sarrat or sarra, something good happens, happy times, it's, he's thankful for it. So something good happens, you're grateful for it, and that's good for him. And if something difficult happens, hardship, difficulties in life, calamities, he's patient, and that's also good for him. So whether it's good times or bad times, it's always good. Good times, you're thankful, Allah rewards you. Uh, bad times, you're patient, Allah rewards you. So in both, situation, both situations, it's, it's a reward, it's positive. There's, there's, there's actually no negativity. There's actually nothing, um, no harm, no uh, low point at all. Now, can you think of times when you've found life a real struggle and things have been really challenging for you? Yeah, so I think that, that hadith is always something that you go to when you're maybe not feeling so good, um, you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, or life's getting too much for you. And when you come to that, that hadith, it makes you realize that, look, it doesn't matter. You know, everything's good. At the end of the day, inshallah, everything's, everything's a positive. So that has really helped me in times of difficulty. Um, for me, I would say the majority of the difficulties I faced was during my studies. It wasn't an easy process. Like I said before, um, you're up against your own family, up against your friends, up against your own community. People involved in Islamic work were against you. Um, so many obstacles. People question you all the time. What are you going to do when you come back? How are you going to earn a living? How are you going to support your family? Um, really making you think about all these things. Having gone out, not from a religious family, not really fitting into any particular in masjid, you know, there was no guaranteed job at the end of what I was doing. I remember once one of my friends visited me in Syria and um, he asked me, you know, I don't understand what you're doing. Can you explain to me? So I explained to him, he goes, I still don't get it. He goes, look, I've got a degree. I've got a master's degree. He goes, I understand you get a degree, you get a job. You do a master's degree, you've got more skills, you get a better job. I do a PhD. Uh, I put more time in, more effort, I get an even better job. Right, so I understand that system. But he goes, I don't understand. You're just spending time, you're reading a book with a sheikh. What are you getting? What qualifications do you get at the end of it? What are you getting at the end of it? And I said, look, um, I'm getting knowledge. And that just couldn't register with him, that you're getting something, but it doesn't equate to any monetary value. It doesn't equate to any... Uh, increase in job prospects it's just something which is nice um, whereas to me I was like well I'm gaining knowledge of Allah I'm gaining knowledge of my creator I'm gaining knowledge of my prophet I'm benefiting I'm growing as a person but that has no value you know it's like um, um, housewives you know a lot of housewives feel undervalued by society to say I'm only a housewife yet what they're doing is incredibly important. They are nurturing the next generation. They are nurturing um, human beings who are, inshallah, you might be the next genius. They're, they're nurturing or the next Abu Hanifa, for example, or next Ghazali of our time. Uh, yet we don't value it because it's, it's not got a monetary value to it. So just because society doesn't value something doesn't mean that it's not one of the most awesome things that you can do. So I had to really struggle, even with my own friends, and trying to, you know, it's just a constant pressure trying to explain yourself, trying to justify yourself. Um, but for me, it made me more determined. It made me more determined that, yeah, this was my choice. And you know something? I'm going to show everyone. I'm going to show everybody. And when they see it, they're going to see that they were in the wrong and it wasn't me. And was there ever a time when you doubted yourself, so that maybe I just need to pack it all in? 
where I can't keep doing this or this is just not happening. For absolutely, me. absolutely. There were times when I had doubts. It was times when I thought maybe everyone's right and I'm wrong. Because it was difficult, you know, I was having difficulties abroad, financial difficulties, um, people weren't helpful, you're in a different country, you feel lonely, you feel cut off, you can't see any, you know, at that time I wasn't married, who's going to marry me, I don't have a stable job, um, how am I going to settle down, what am I going to do in the future, um, all of those things play on you, um, and the added pressure from you know, expectations of the community, expected family expectations. But I think I always used to get through it. I always used to say, Inshallah, I've come out for the sake of Allah and Allah's going to take care of me. I'm doing this for the sake of Allah. I would question my, my, my intention. What is my intention here? And if I'm sincere and I'm doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will not let me down. People might let me down. The community might let me down. My family might let me down. But my creator is never going to let me down. Thank you for listening to Desert Island Gems. Let us know what you think of the show and keep an eye out for special versions on mcmuslim.tv.